good morning in the previous lecture we have been discussing about providing introduction to nico stability criteria the basic mathematics involved in nico stability criteria and how uh, and the procedure involved in how if a transfer function is provided how to draw a nico plot how to divide the uh, sessions how to map each session separately and combining them so these uh, areas we focused in the previous lecture and today we will take an example problem it's a basic problem and the uh, few lectures following this particular lecture i'll be discussing about problems only of giving importance to uh, uh, different types of problems in the same nyquist um criteria stability criteria analysis so if you see the statement of this problem by nico stability criteria determine the stability of the closed loop system whose open loop transfer function is given by g of s h of s is equal to s plus 2 divided by s plus 1 into s minus 1 comment on the stability of the open loop and the closed loop they are asking both open loop and the closed loop okay so we can directly comment about open loop system because it is directly provided okay what what about the open loop system stability how do you say since you find one pole on the right hand side of the s plane you can find it in the rhs rhs of s plane so you can directly say the provided open loop system is unstable if you want to explain little more clearly then you have because of s minus 1 you have a pole s is equal to 1 in right hand side of this plane you have a pole s is equal to plus 1 in left hand side minus 1 actually s is equal to minus 1 and s is equal to minus 2 A zero on the left hand side. So this is your L H S, and this is your R H S. Okay, this is your sigma. This is your J omega. So based on the open loop systems pole locations, this provided system is. unstable unstable but we have to comment about the closed loop system so we have to further okay let us consider the procedure how to go for a nyquist plot since you find no poles at the imaginary axis all are real poles exactly situated uh on the real axis alone no imaginary axis is being covered so there is no need to take any detour while you are considering the entire right hand side of the s plane so your nyquist contour considered in the s plane looks like this it is been divided into two uh, three different sessions you can see section c1 C two and C three. Section C one, C two, and C three. If you see session C one, the omega value varies from zero to plus infinity, and the right hand side considered this semicircle. You can see that the entire right hand side plane is being considered, and the radius of that particular considered considered area. Let us say it's a looking like a semicircle. So the radius is infinite. That is, it, it means that the entire right hand side is being considered, obviously. Then, in the imaginary axis, the third section varies from minus infinity to zero. So this particular diagram or figure provides you the entire information about how the entire right hand side of the S plane is being considered. okay since it is been considered this also encloses 
encloses the the pole on one okay so when do you say based on nyquist criteria the closed loop system will be stable if you map this considered s plane contour into g of s h of s plane and you find only one encirclement around the point minus 1 plus j0 happens that to in anti clockwise direction only one encirclement around minus 1 plus j0 point in anti clockwise direction then you can say that closed loop system is stable otherwise if it deviates from that you say the system is unstable we will verify so that is what they have said the nyquist contour has three sections c1 c2 and c3 and each section has to be performed mapped separately and the overall nyquist plot is obtained by combining the individual sections so how to map this how to map the first first section that is c1 okay using the methodology how to draw a polar plot so how a polar plot is drawn you convert this open loop transfer function into a sinusoidal transfer function by substituting s is equal to j omega so it becomes j omega plus 2 j omega plus 1 j omega minus 1 and be cautious that whether it is in time constant form no so you take this two outside two is taken outside and s is replaced with j omega so 2 if taken outside it becomes 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 2 into s so it is 0.5 s it has no change actually now you replace s with j omega now this is the transfer function for which for which the polar plot has to be drawn roughly now if you see this for drawing polar plot you need both magnitude as well as phase so for this factor 2 it doesn't have any phase because it's a real number the phase value is going to be zero so the magnitude is going to be square root of 2 squared so it is 2 for this term 1 plus j 0.5 omega the magnitude magnitude uh, term is square root of 1 squared plus 0.5 squared omega squared so 0.5 squared is 0.25 square root of 1 plus 0.25 squared 0.25 into omega squared the phase angle is tan inverse of imaginary part divided by real part so tan inverse of 0.5 omega divided by 1 so tan inverse of 0.5 omega divided by 1 for this term it is going to be square root of 1 plus omega squared tan inverse of omega by 1 so tan inverse of omega here you you link this term with this node you can see this term will be available in your minus 1 plus j omega <coughs> this minus 1 plus j omega will be lying in your second quadrant if you take a uh, four quadrants minus 1 plus j omega will be lying in this quadrant probably if if we consider omega is positive always so it will be available in this particular quadrant in this quadrant the second quadrant so the phase angle has to be 180 minus that angle since it is in second quadrant it has to be 180 minus tan inverse because if you consider any point here you will have an obtuse angle for an obtuse angle the calculation will be 180 minus that angle you should have you should have considered this same type of analysis in your root locus plot while you are going for angle of uh, asymptotes finding out angle of uh, it's not angle of asymptotes it is angle angle of departure or angle of uh, arrival in the, in that case you should have come across calculating different angles if the angle is assumed uh, if found to be obtuse in nature then you normally go for 180 minus tan inverse of omega that you i think you remember that so this is the combination of magnitude as well as phase plot this can be written this is your magnitude area because 
you can find this square root of 1 plus omega squared again square root of 1 plus omega squared if you multiply these two you'll square root of 2 into square root of 2 is 2 so square root of 1 plus omega squared square root of 1 plus omega squared becomes 1 plus omega squared the numerator is as it is and this is what you get as your phase equation because this is minus standardness of omega this is plus standardness of omega if you add it what happens here these two gets cancelled you will get only 180 if this 180 goes upwards it becomes minus 180 so minus 180 plus standardness of 0.5 omega is the angle equation so go through this little cautiously you will be able to understand what i am trying to say so modulus of g of j omega the magnitude is this part and angle of g of j omega the phase is this part now you substitute different omega values from 0 to infinity because your c1 section varies from 0 to infinity you substitute different values then you will be able to know where it starts and where it ends both in magnitude as well as phase so it is clear that if you substitute 0 numerator becomes 0 denominator becomes remains with 1 numerator this term becomes 0 you will have 1 into 2 it is 2 so obviously it starts at 2 and when you substitute infinity anything divided by infinity is always going to be 0 so you you substitute these omega values it is not mandatory that it should you should substitute these values alone you you should have 0 and infinity there in the meantime you can take any number of uh, 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 omega values from uh, 0 to infinity you can take any numbers okay so choose accordingly so that you are able to uh, calculate the values using your calculators you will get the magnitude value like this and if you substitute that different omega values here in this equation you will get different uh, uh, phase values so at 0 omega the magnitude is 2 and it is located at minus 180 degree line so if you take that diagram it starts at 2 and 180 degree so the point will be looking here uh, lying here the point lies here let us say this is 2 actually and this this is 0 degree 90 180 270 360 or if you go the, in, in clockwise direction this is 0 minus 90 minus 180 minus 270 and 360 okay so this is how um, the points will be located the uh, the phase angles will be uh, available so at the point 2 180 degree will be here the last point when omega is equal to infinity you can get you, you are getting zero value that is origin and uh, the the angle is minus 90 so the point will be looking like this so the mean time you can see minus 168 minus 153 minus 135 minus 100. so it goes on like this so so your your curve will be looking like this in this direction and this is omega is equal to infinity uh, zero and this is omega is equal to infinity so this is the direct this is the diagram of your first uh, session mapped in g of s h of s plane g of s <coughs> h of s plane okay this is u and this is j v you can see it here so this mapping of c1 is done from s plane to g of s h of s plane like this clear then we we'll go to the next session that is c2 we can see it c2 c2 varies from this is plus 5 by 2 the angle is plus 5 by 2 because 90 0 this is 90 it varies up to minus 5 by 2 or we can say 270 okay 270 or minus 90 okay the radius here is r tends to infinity so that is what it's mentioned. The mapping of session C2 from S plane to G of S of S plane is obtained by letting very importantly S tends to limit R tends R tends to infinity. S is equal to limit R tends to infinity R e power j theta 
and the theta value varies from minus plus phi by two to minus phi by two. Okay, at this level, your transfer function, this time constant form, will have only significant contribution of this particular point, st only. One is very very much negligible because r this s will be replaced with r e power j theta and r tends to infinity the magnitude of infinite with one will provide you only infinite so this particular term st will be infinite infinite plus one will be infinite so there is no use of considering this one so one plus st converts can be uh, taken as st alone now you substitute this in your transfer function so two one plus point five s one plus s minus one plus s. This is your transfer function. So this one plus point five s point five s based on this assumption becomes one plus s t as s t. So one plus point five s as point five s. One plus s as s and one minus one plus s as s. So what is remaining two into point five is one. S s gets cancelled. Remaining is one s. Yes, so one by s. Now you replace s yes with this term. Limit r tends to infinity r e power j theta. So you replace instead of yes, ah, uh, limit r tends to infinity r e power j theta. So what do you have actually? You replace r with infinity. One on anything by infinity is zero. So zero, this e power j theta becomes e power minus j theta if it goes to the numerator. What is theta then? Theta when theta varies from minus five to plus five to minus plus five to to minus five to. So when theta is equal to pi by two, what is the value? It is zero e power. Replace theta with pi by two. It is e power minus theta, so it is going to be e power minus j pi by two. Now theta is equal to minus pi by two, then you will have zero is equal zero into e power j pi by two. So this is the two points. So how to map it? How to map it? The magnitude will be looking like this. This is the session. Very negligible value zero. So this is the point. Let us. I will take another color. So this is the point at this. Uh, so maybe here. This is minus five by two first. The plus five by two. Let us say this is this is what happens as a mapping in this direction. In this direction, and the radius of this is going to be zero. R tends to zero. Radius is zero in your G of S H of S plane. J V U. <coughs> now you can see it here. Yes, R tends to zero. U V J V and this direction. This particular S plane. Is been mapped to G of S of plane, and the map value looks like this. Is it clear? Then we go to mapping of session C three. What you notice from this first diagram? This C three looks like the mirror image. It is similar to that of this C one. So how do you got C one? This is this is the this is the plot of C one. So its mirror image will be looking like this in this direction. Obviously, you can see it here. That is what has been mentioned in the book also. In section C three, omega varies from minus infinity to zero. The mapping of section C three is given by the locus of this particular transfer function as omega is varied from minus infinity to zero. So it's it's again the mirror image of the polar plot with respect to with respect to uh, the real axis. It's a mirror image. So you can see it here. It's a mirror image of C1 in this direction. So three sessions are being mapped separately. Now, if you combine all these three, how your plot looks like? The first plot. I will take another one. This is first plot. Okay. Then the second mapping is a little like similar to this, and the third 
mapping is similar to what of this the direction is this this is minus 2 so if you combine all this since this is minus 2 your point minus 1 will be inside it and take a darker this is minus 1 so if you combine all these three figures you are getting it here like this first plot first recession this is c1 this is c2 and this is c3 now the combined plot is available since this point is minus 2 minus 1 will be inside this now you see it has been encircled the plot is encircling minus 1 plus j0 point in once actually in anti clockwise direction so the system is stable even the system is the open loop system is unstable if you go for a closed loop stability analysis it is found that this particular provided system is stable based on nyquist criteria i think you understand the problem and the way how to a plot a nyquist plot i have taken a very simple example and i have trying i am trying to explain it in the next uh, probable video i will add some complication to the problem to another problem and we will discuss about nyquist stability criteria again thank you